Unit 2, The Economy, Lecture 6, Economic Indicators, Part B. We're looking here now at indicators that give us information on inflation. Now, inflation is the persistent increase in the general level of prices and can be seen as actually the devaluing of the worth of money. So if you have 100 Rand today and 100 Rand next year and inflation was 10%, then the 100 Rand next year is actually worth 10% less than the 100 Rand this year. Now, when we're looking at um, inflation that is a result of increasing prices due to increasing demand, we're looking at consumer price index. Here the price indices measure levels of and changes in particular baskets of prices. So if you look at the CPI, it's a weighted average of the prices of a representative group of goods and services that households purchase. So information for CPI is presented as monthly index values. The focus is on percentage changes. Here interest rates are high because we're looking at an inflationary environment. Bond prices will be low during high in, in periods of high interest. Share prices during periods of high inflation and high interest result in falling prices. And the impact on exchange rate, unfortunately, is actually uncertain. So this is the inflation that is related to the supply side or production. Um, the producer price index, PPI, tracks prices at the first stage of distribution or at the point of the first commercial transaction. If we look at prices of domestically produced goods, they're measured when they leave the factory and imported goods, their prices are measured when they arrive in the country and not when either of these are sold. So PPI actually measures the cost of production. So it's looking at the inflationary pressures that are exerted on the cost of the input factors for the production process. Its likely impact on indicators or economic indicators is similar to CPI. So now we're looking at the balance of payments and it's actually a tabulation of a country's foreign transactions over a period. In South Africa, uh, the balance of payments is divided into three main subsections, the current account, the capital transfer account, and the financial account. So the sum of the balances equals the change in the country's gold and foreign reserves, and the change serves as the balancing item on the balance of payments. So the most important component of the balance of payments is the current account. It's used on its own to determine economic activity within a country. Its balance summarizes all South Africa's international trades in goods and services over a period. So if we look at the current account balance, it's calculated by the sum of the components for the trade balance, which looks at all exports of physical goods minus imports of physical goods. The services account, all exports of services, less imports of services. Um, where services are intangible actions such as transportation, business services, royalties, and licensing. Net income, which is the balance of income resulting from salaries, rent, interest, profits, and dividends. And net current transfers, transfers with nothing received in return, include donations, aids, grants, and official assistance. Now we're looking at the capital transfer account and the balance of payments and it consists of two major components, capital transfers and the acquisition or disposal of non-produced non-financial assets. So in terms of capital transfers, they are offsetting transactions to transfer the ownership of fixed assets, transfers of funds associated with the acquisition or disposal of fixed assets, debt forgiveness and transfers by migrants. In terms of the acquisition or disposal of non-produced non-financial assets, examples here are the building of production plants or manufacturing facilities. And these transactions are not identified separately in the South Africa's balance of payments. Finally, we come to the financial account in the balance of payments 
and this includes all transactions in foreign investments and investments in South African assets by foreign entities classified according to type of investment. So three types would be direct investment, which would be investment in business and real estate or property, portfolio investment, and this will involve investments in financial security such as equities, bonds and so forth, and other investments. This comprises trade credits, loan, currency and deposits. So to end this lecture, we're going to look at the features interpretation of the current account and it's presented as a monthly index value. The focus here is on the trends and its size versus GDP. It has a limited impact on interest rates, bond prices, um, share prices, but share prices can decrease if firms are not globally competitive. And in terms of the exchange rate, it's uncertain. A worsening balance can result in depreciation but can also lead to appreciation depending on economic growth.